Happy Pentecost. Good to see you and be with you today. I hope you're having a glorious day so far. I love it. These worship services are sponsored by Landrum Presbyterian Church and Inman Presbyterian Church in the upstate of South Carolina. You can find lyrics to hymns on Inman Pres, P R E S dot org on the online worship page if you want to cue those up. We'll be singing Every Time I Feel the Spirit, and they will know we are Christians by our love with an offertory of spirit, which is a uh, all about the Holy Spirit today. Before we begin, a few announcements for church folks. In Landrum, the session met this past week, and we are polling members about the possibility of opening up June the 14th with the session meeting to be announced, uh, depending on what kind of feedback we get. The next uh, Inman session meeting is scheduled for Monday, June the 8th at 6.30 p.m. by way of Zoom. There's also a Zoom fellowship meeting this week for Inman folks at a Thursday at 6 o'clock. The invite goes out uh, either the day before or the morning of, so you can look for that. If you want to be included in the list of emails to which it's sent, just let me know or Aaron know. We will make sure you are at it. Prayer concerns. Um, Landrum has had some people taken off. Dean is doing a lot better and he's at home and we're so thankful for that. Tillman is doing a lot better at home and he had a drive through birthday party from what I understand and that was a great event for him. So we're taking them off, thank goodness. We need to especially pray for Jim. He's having a really hard time with his chemo treatments. It's really knocked him down. Please pray for Jim and Ruby is in her uh, nursing home and it's, we can't really get to her, but we pray for her and some people have been talking to her on the phone. In Inman, we are still praying for Clyde, that's Carol M's dad, who is in a hospice situation with cancer in one of his arms that they're trying to control the pain. Delbridge got bumped up this week because his eye surgery is next week. Praise the Lord, it got postponed for a long time. So we need to pray for Delbert. Also, ongoing for, uh, concerns, you can see Daisy and Celeste and the others down there that we've been praying for, as well as the car ministry. So uh, please pray for those folks. If you have a prayer concern you want to add, let me know and we will add them to the list. Now this morning... Uh, I know uh, some of you sent me some pictures wearing red and a lot of you had technical difficulties <laughs> and couldn't get me your picture. So that didn't really come together, but I have a very special treat for you this morning. I have, uh, we have a story that's been happening in our presbytery that maybe you didn't know about. We're part of Foothills Presbytery in the northwest corner of South Carolina and there was a children's choir from Uganda that came to the U.S. and they had a whole tour of places to, to sing and this pandemic has shut them down and they got stranded. Well, we have been housing and feeding and praying for them there at Camp Fellowship, which is, a, you know, the camp that's supported by the Presbytery. So those children and their sponsors have been living there. And so they decided that for the first time in their existence, they wanted to give kind of a thank you concert and they uh, broadcast it to Facebook Live. And this is just the first part of that concert. Now, if you want to know more about the, the group, it's a school um, and its mission is, uh, from their website, we are a Christian organization on a mission to rescue, educate, develop, and improve lives of Uganda's orphaned and most vulnerable children. We overcome the obstacles in their path by equipping them with the necessary skills to become productive and self-sustaining leaders in society. And again, that's the Imani Milele, and I'll put a link wherever it is in YouTube. I'll also put it on the website. 
if you want to find out more about this group. So now, get ready to smile and be filled with the Holy Spirit as we listen to the children's choir of Imani Lalele. <laughs> If you aren't smiling, you need to check yourself into a hospital. So let us be filled with the Holy Spirit and come before the Lord. Enjoy this day to worship in spirit and truth. I invite you to join me in the call to worship. They were all together in one place and suddenly sound like a hurricane filled the room and tongues of fire rested on everyone and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing a hymn together, Every Time I Feel the Spirit.
Now let us join together in a time of confession where we come before the Lord and say how it is with us truly and honestly and examine our lives and ask for God's forgiveness in Jesus Christ, trusting in God's grace. I invite you to join me in the prayer of confession or to claim it in your heart and then use the time of silence that follows for your own personal prayers to your God. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Blow through our tired lives. Blow down the walls that divide us. Wash away all pride and selfishness and replace them with your love. Then teach us how to speak as Jesus would speak and do as Jesus would do, so we can build your kingdom in this world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. This is the good news, that in Jesus Christ, we are all of us forgiven. Amen. With joyful hearts forgiven and freed, let us offer our prayers of thanksgiving to the Lord, thinking of ways that we can give of ourselves and our things to be part of God's wonderful work in this earth. The church addresses are up in case uh, you're in a place where you can give to your church and drop a check in the mail. Let us enjoy this time of thanksgiving led by Joan with her wonderful gifts on the piano.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, we lift up to you our prayers of thanksgiving and ask you to bless them and to bless us to be your holy instruments in this earth to bring about your kingdom of peace and love for all. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear now God's word as it comes to us from Holy Scripture. This is our first scripture reading of the day. Today's scripture lesson is from Psalms 104. It's verses 24 to 34. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is in the sea vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number. Living things, both large and small, there the ships go to and fro. The Leviathan, which you formed, frolic there. Those all look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the faith of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. This is the scripture lesson for today. And now turning to the New Testament. Thank you, Aaron. Turning to the New Testament lesson for the day. Of course, it's Pentecost, right? And the story for Pentecost you can find in the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 2, and I'm going to share verses 1 to 13. I'm going to break it up into two parts. So listen now for the word of the Lord from Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 right now. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Wow, what a story. I can only imagine what Hollywood would do with this scene. Did you know that uh, days gone by, the church actually designated four Sundays as high holy days in the church? And I know you can guess two of them, right? Four Sundays that are the highest, holiest days in the whole life of the church. You know Christmas got to be one day, right? the Sunday before Christmas, and the other one's got to be Easter, right? Jesus is born, Jesus is raised from the dead.
Can you guess what the other two is? Well, we're on Pentecost, so duh, one of them has to be Pentecost, right? This is a high holy day. The other one is actually All Saints Day, that first Sunday in November where we celebrate the, uh, the, all the saints who have come before us and will go after us. Um, always that, that Sunday after Halloween, which is actually a part of that celebration, kind of a, but anyway, that's another story for another day. Today we're on Pentecost, a high holy day of the church. And why would that be? What is so special about this day? Well, this is the day that Jesus told his disciples about for a long time. One who is comforting, coming, who's a comforter, one who will be an advocate. The paraclete is going to come and it's going to be sent to you and it's going to be like me and God there with you except this, this one is going to be with you forever. Never leave your side. And this is the story of the moment that it happened when the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our risen Lord was given to his believers. And so some churches on Pentecost Sunday will have a big birthday cake because it's the birthday of the church. The church was born on Pentecost. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no church. Without the Holy Spirit, people don't know to love each other. They don't remember who Jesus was. They don't know how to act. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God in the earth. It's the presence of God in our hearts. So, of course, this is the high holy day that we celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit to us that was enabled by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Glory, hallelujah, all praise to God. And we see that when uh, 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 the Holy Spirit came, they were all gathered together in one place. And, you know, reading that, I have to say, makes me a little sad because we're in a place where we can't safely all gather together in one place. And, and for a churchgoer, that's a hurtful thing. It hurts you. I had a, uh, somebody was telling me this week that they were having a conversation with someone who was not churched, one of their friends who doesn't go to church, or at least not regularly, and they were trying to explain how difficult it was not to be able to go to church and fellowship the church the person just completely didn't get it they didn't understand for church people coming together that's where we we draw spirit and energy from each other we feel the presence of god as we gather together and so not to gather together is a, a spiritual burden for us and i say this so that you understand, if you get droopy sometimes, if you feel yourself falling into kind of a state where of confusion or trouble or rage or depression or despair, it's actually understandable. You're like those children of Israel in the wilderness right now. You've been separated from something precious. So give yourself some space and some forgiveness and know that the Lord will give you what you need in your home or with your family or by yourself if you're by yourself. This is a time where faith is tested and it is a time to hold on to the scripture and use whatever we can to, to stay connected to each other in different ways because that's what we're having to do. We're having to find new and interesting ways to connect. Everybody's using Zoom. I know I've had some very, very small gatherings, very far spaced apart from people on patios and on porches and things like this. Safely, being smart, taking care of each other. But there are other ways that we can stay connected. And the miracle of the Holy Spirit is even when we aren't with each other, we can be connected. We can know. 
we can consciously know and pray for each other. And when we do that, the Holy Spirit just shoots out again all over the place and connects us with these holy invisible bonds that cannot be broken. On the day of Pentecost, they were all together in one place. We are together in one place right now by the power of our hearing and our praying and our longing and our willing and our wishing for the good of the other. We have the Spirit and as we share it, we are together too, even though we aren't in the same room. And on that first Pentecost, when they were together, we're told, suddenly from heaven there came the sound like the rush of a violent wind. It's not the first time that the imagery of wind has been used for the Holy Spirit, even beginning in Genesis. The breath of God hovering over the waters, the Ruach, the Holy Ruach. And God breathed into a ball of mud and it breathed and became a human being. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, the wind goes where it will. You, you, you cannot see it, but you see the trees moving. And though you can't see it, you know it's there and it's real. There came from heaven, away from us, but to us, a sound, we are told. The sound of a violent wind. Now, if you've ever been anywhere near a tornado or a hurricane, you know what they're talking about. The sound of wind whistling by a window or whipping things, you just won't ever forget that sound. I remember I've been a couple of times in my life where I've been, I don't even know if they were tornadoes. I think they were microburst, but the sound is like a People call it like a freight train. There's nothing like it you've ever heard this sound. So you know those folks were like, oh. And that sound, when it's a tornado or hurricane, means there is a tremendous force moving. There is a force, unstoppable force moving, can, can take off the roof, can pull out trees, can, if you watch the movie Twister, move, blow cows around in the air, right? It's an unstoppable force. So on the day of Pentecost, God sent this unstoppable force of holiness into the world, and nothing can stop it. The wind of God comes to his people and comes to us. Nothing can stop that. Nothing. Not people not behaving like they're supposed to, not even police officers misbehaving can stop that. Eventually we know justice is going to come. Not even people, some virus invading the world and disrupting everything can stop this holy wind as emergency workers and hospitals and nurses and people keep working and fighting and fighting and somebody right now is sitting in a lab coming up with a vaccine. A vaccine that we're ready for now, but they got to work it out. And it's coming and we know it's coming because the wind of God is not going to tolerate such death in the world. Suddenly, from heaven, there came this sound of the rush of the violent wind. And, and then we're told, uh, 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 divided tongues as of fire appeared among them. Now that makes me think of lightning, like tongues of, can you imagine how scared you would be if you looked up and in the ceiling there was like, lightning bolts coming out, kind of fiery lightning bolts, and, and every person in the room was hit by this lightning bolt right in the head. I'm telling you, I'd like to see what Steven Spielberg did with that one. 
When I think of fire, again, I think of energy, just pure, unbridled energy. Now with lightning, there, there comes this terrible destruction and, and fire, we think of destruction. But this holy fire of God didn't bring destruction. It brought life. It brought abilities. It brought power. And what was this power? Where we're told in the next sentence. A tongue rested on each of them. And all of them filled with the Holy Spirit began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The Spirit gave them this tremendous power to speak, to communicate. And so I wish I knew other languages because I'd talk and I, I would look at you and suddenly I'd be speaking Spanish or I'd be speaking Russian or I'd be speaking Portuguese or I'd be speaking hip hop or Gullah. Or perhaps in this computer age, I'd be speaking uh, eloquent JavaScript or Python or HTML and CSS. These are languages that are springing into being in our lifetime. All these people gathered, each of them were given these tremendous abilities to express in language, in all the languages of the world. Think about that. The most powerful gift of God given to you is the power to speak and the power to speak in somebody else's language. This reminds me so much of of work with youth. I started as a youth minister in Sunday school, kind of a DCE kind of person, director of Christian education, as well as mission and fellowship and some other things. And so much of being a youth minister was simply spending time with young people and trying to get into their world to understand. Because they have their whole world, man, and every generation comes up with their secret code to talk to each other in ways that the adults won't quite understand. And part of being a youth minister and leader is to be quiet and to listen and to live with peacefully and gracefully in that world to learn how you can communicate from one world to another and it is the world of grace to the world of the young people. That's just one example. You know, the Lord has put you in some place in your life. The Lord has put you in some place to talk to somebody else in a language that the Holy Spirit can give you. Maybe it's in the language of um, one homemaker to another. Maybe it's the language of a parent to another. Maybe it's a language of someone who lives a single lifestyle to another person who is single in this pandemic area. There are really major issues that single people are, are dealing with right now. There are so many languages of the earth Know and believe that your Lord has given you one of those languages or many of them to speak the truth of God and to witness to the amazing grace of a man named Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit was given to the church and it was born on Pentecost so many years ago. We celebrate that today. And now listen to the end of the story. Just listen to it and hear and be amazed and give glory to your God in heaven. 
again in Acts chapter 2, this time starting out, starting with verse 5. Uh, or verse 4, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the sound of that hurricane or tornado, that holy wind, whatever it was, at this sound that crowd gathered and was bewildered. What in the world? Because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans, and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them and gave the speech of his lifetime. This guy raised in a fishing village to be nothing more than a fisherman stood up in a climate that had put the Son of God on the cross and looked out at the whole world gathered there in Jerusalem and spoke with courage and conviction and grace about a man named Jesus Christ, crucified and risen. Peter did that. The uneducated fisherman by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so can you. Thanks be to God. So can we all. In the name of God the Father, Son, and oh yeah, Holy Spirit. Amen. I give you some time now to think about these amazing words. And what God may be saying to you this day, calling to you over the troubles of the world, I invite you to take time to think about and pray about what these words of Holy Scripture mean for your life. Amen and amen. Let us now consider those who have asked for special prayer support in their lives. Um, I invite you to join me in a season of prayer. Let us pray. O Lord our God, on this day of Pentecost, we lift up to you our prayers for those who feel powerless 
for those who feel weak and bowed down. And we pray for your great spirit of peace and grace and healing to find them. Lord, hear our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. O oh Lord, we know uh, there are still walls, O oh Lord. There are walls of hostility. We have seen it in action this week. We ask you to send your spirit now to blow down those walls that we would be able to love each other regardless of skin color or any other visual signs of boundaries among us. Hear our prayers this day. In Jesus' name we pray. O oh Lord, we know that there are people who are charged with the important and weighty responsibility of keeping peace and order. And it is a time of great turmoil. We pray for those people and agencies that are charged to care for society and for communities. Hear our prayers. O oh Lord, hear us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we also pray for those who are sick. They have disease in their bodies. We pray for their families. We pray for doctors and nurses and surgeons and others who are diagnosing and treating them. And we pray your Holy Spirit of healing and comfort be with them. Hear our prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And lastly, O oh Lord, we pray for your church, for your church all over the world and for Christians all over the world, that you would help us to find new ways to be together, that you would give us the faith we need in these difficult times. And we pray for Inman Presbyterian Church. And we pray for Landrum Presbyterian Church and their leaders. Hear our prayers for our church, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hear us, O Lord, as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today we're going to share in the last part of the brief confession of faith. Remember we had the part about I trust in Jesus Christ, I trust in God, and now for Pentecost it's I trust in the Holy Spirit. Let us share in this uh, affirmation of faith together. We trust in God the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, 
claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us sing a hymn of parting together, fitting for this day and for this week. They will know we are Christians by our love. Brothers and sisters in Christ, may the Lord give you love and power and grace beyond measure today. And as you go back into your lives and into your families, know that the grace of your Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God your Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit goes with you this day and every day. Amen.